this is a bit of a rant about batteries I've been helping a few people out recently who have been having problems with their batteries especially on their generator battery systems uh, where the batteries are charged up maybe once a day or or just whenever the owners think that the batteries need charging and what tends to happen is the batteries are deep cycled so the, some people run their inverters until the inverter switches itself off through low volts and then they charge the batteries up which is entirely the wrong thing to do so what happens is and let's say for instance you have a 24 volt system then you'll have 12 cells at 2 volts on lead acid and over time through heavy discharge and deep cycling each individual cell will charge at a different rate so what happens is maybe one or two of the cells get discharged a bit more than the rest and then when they're charged up they don't get charged up quite as much and then they're discharged again and charged up again and that difference increases so you get some cells that are only half charged and then discharged very deeply and this is where an equalizing charge is needed at regular intervals and you must combine this with don't discharge your batteries too far the batteries are a buffer between your generation and your consumption they're not a total storage if you've got 200 amp hour batteries then you don't draw all 200 amp hours out of there you would allow a maximum of about 100 amp hours to disappear and most people haven't got a clue what's going on and when you're talking amp hours it's not an easy thing to measure how much you've used so with flooded type lead acid batteries you can use a hydrometer to quantify the level of charge in each cell so I'm just now trying to renovate a series of Trojan batteries for somebody let's have a look so there's some noise in the background but never mind I'm using this old Danset charger which is very variable there we've got a coarse setting and there we've got a fine setting just see what's going on yeah we're charging at 9 amps at the moment and here are the batteries this last one here I've just added because the one that was there was fully charged and I trickled it for a while longer so I've added it to the batteries that I perceive to be reasonably well charged and now want testing but let's have a look at the hydrometer readings so this is the one that I've just added and let's have a look see what the readings are the float doesn't even float So they're as flat as a flat thing on a flat day. Now, now this back one here, I've been charging for two days. And that one shows right on the line between the red and the green at 1275 
and the next one and that one's not quite there that's a one two five oh and the third one can we see yes and there you go you see that's between the white and the red so I'm not sure about this battery but I'm going to continue to trickle charge it along with the other cells at about six to seven amps maybe for another 24 hours now these batteries as you could see here they're six volt units that's why they've got three cells in them and let's go 225 amp hours at the 20 hour rate so if you discharged it at something like 225 divided by 20 which would be something like 11 amps you should get 225 amp hours with the power out of them but that will be really flat then and it's not what you're supposed to do although it says it on there it's not the right thing to do to get longevity out of your batteries yeah you want to take as I say a maximum of about 100 amp hours out but that's not a re what I really want to say is you can take the 20 hour rate and divide the amp hours by the hours and you'll get about 11 and that means that you can safely charge this for quite a long time at about 11 amps without doing any major damage yeah, and then if you got them right up there and you wanted to equalize them a bit more bearing in mind the voltage will have gone up by them you can then charge them at say 6 amps for a long time to bring all the the cells up to an equal state of charge all the cells should be equal and heavy discharge and continuous charge discharge cycles will mean that the state of charge per individual cell will be uneven so rant over you've got to look after your batteries so let's say for instance you've got an off-grid system and you've got solar and a generator so how do you make sure you don't over discharge the batteries there are several ways if you use something like a stecker charge controller especially the the tarom which i've got here 48 volt one it's got some voltless contacts in it which means you can get the charge controller to switch the generator on so if the voltage goes below, let's say, on a 24 volt system, if it goes below 23.5, and that would happen when you put in quite a big load on it, then it will switch the generator on, and the generator is hardwired to your charger. So there you go, that's one way of doing it. That helps. The other one, of course, is pay attention look at your batteries every couple of weeks measure the specific gravity work out what's going on and of course you measure the specific gravity with a hydrometer and it's best to put a plastic apron on to avoid little drops of acid on your trousers the other thing there is when you're reading the hydrometer leave the nozzle in the battery in the electrolyte if you go lifting the hydrometer out of the battery when it's got acid in it not only will you get holes in your jeans but you'll get a wrong reading so if you've got a bad back or poor eyesight then use a stool and a torch and your best glasses 
Uh, the other side is if you've got an inverter, which most people use now, you can set the inverter to switch off at a reasonably high voltage, like 23 volts, rather than the default setting, which is far too low. The other thing is you can get the inverter to switch on your generator. Again, they have what's called voltless contacts in there. And then you can adjust everything in the software. We are lucky here, we've got um, grid connection. So our Victron uh, inverter, I've set it up so that it, it switches over to the mains above a certain load or when the batteries get below a certain voltage. That way you're protecting your batteries. So you have a charge controller to prevent overcharging and you have various methods, the charge controller, uh, voltless contacts or the inverter to make sure that the, the voltage of your batteries doesn't go too low. That way preventing over discharge. If you're just on a manual system the main, the main thing there is run your generator every day and make sure that you're charging your uh, batteries when the generator is running. I have known situations where people have uh, put high loads on like immersion heaters and stuff like that only when the generator is running and effectively that high load has absorbed all the charge that was coming out the charger so therefore the batteries weren't being charged yeah they thought they were but they're not so awareness meters being aware of what's going on uh, looking at your amp meter looking at the state of charge of the batteries this is where if you have sealed uh, lead acid batteries like uh, I did a video solar diesel last year sometime I might put that link in the video description uh, because they're sealed all you can do is measure the voltage and the reasonably flat battery will show open circuit it will still show 12 12 and a half volts but if that was a flooded battery and you checked the specific gravity with a hydrometer you would realize that the battery is quite flat and because it damages things um, this is all in the book by the way uh, what happens is the SO4 part of the sulfuric acid moves from the electrolyte and becomes lead sulfate on the battery plates and in doing so it makes the battery plates bigger so the sides of the uh, battery cases start to swell out and also the plates over time start to fall apart so you, know, you can make a set of forklift batteries on a wind and solar system even if they started off second hand but quite good you can make them last 20 years but you can also make them last six months by battery abuse and that's what this video is about. Take care of your batteries, they'll take care of you. They are the mad granddaddy of the solar world.